All right, so we have a skinny, bald man commuter with very long arms and uh, really short legs standing on a train. And the train is uh, accelerating at 3.7 meters per second squared. And he has nothing to hang on to. And so the question is, um, what is the coefficient of friction that basically allows him to stand in place? Uh, if there was no friction at all, let's assume that just for the sake of discussion that this train, poorly drawn train, is accelerating forward. What would happen to said skinny, bald-headed commuter man? Any resemblance to that figure and people in this room is purely what's that? What would happen to him if there was no friction at all? Or say he was standing on roller blades. He would actually, now it depends on your frame. I heard someone say he would go backwards. Exactly. Very similar to right? Same idea, right? I think it's a joke. I've done that a hundred times. I've done it with like a full glass. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Not a drop. Yeah, it'd be exactly the same thing, Joy. Right? So actually, your frame of reference, if you're outside, right, and standing outside on the ground, you would see the train accelerating and the guy would just sort of like hang in place kind of thing, right? If you were on the train while, and you were hanging on to another, you would see him whizzing off the back kind of thing, right? Okay. So the question is, is what coefficient of friction actually provides enough force to actually do what? The friction force is technically the applied force pushing him forward. Does that make sense? Like if you think about yourself, I'll stand up here, right? Think about yourself standing on a moving platform. What, what keeps you moving forward? The, the friction between your feet and the platform push you forward. Okay? And if you're a heavy, if you're wearing very sort of grippy shoes, there's more chance of you, right, uh, not slipping. If you was covered in ice or if you're wearing uh, Curling slider on ice as you're moving along this traveling ice sheet, well, you'd probably slide off. Yeah. Okay, so what value of mu do we need? That's what the question is here. Well, mu is equal to FF over FN. Can I determine FN on a flat surface like this? Yes, that, that's relatively straightforward. Let's go ahead and do that. FW is equal to MG. 100 times 9.8, or 980 newtons is the weight force. I think we can all agree that's pretty easy. All right, now, can we come up with the friction force? What do I know? I know M and A. What, what, what can I get out of M and A? I can get F net. Yeah, F, oh yeah, I guess I should complete this, you're right. So therefore, the normal force is 908. Thank you, Caitlin, you're right. We can complete F net is equal to MA. So we've got 100 times an acceleration of 3.7. We have a net force of 37 newtons. A net force of 37 newtons will cause the bald, skinny commuter man to move forward. What's providing that net force? Like what, what forces are in play here to um, contribute to that net force? It's 307. Thank you, Kate. Well, we've got a weight force here. We've got a normal force there, which we already know are balanced. Is there any horror, other horizontal force but friction at play here? None. There's no other horizontal force. Therefore, three dots in a triangle. Therefore, the friction force is the net force. And the friction force is 370 newtons. And once you sort of make that logic jump, the jump to coefficient of friction is, well, relatively straightforward. It's simply 
mu equals FF over FN. 370 over 980. Can't do the math there. I don't have a calculator. There I go. Is that the answer, Brandon? Point three eight. Is that is that the right answer? Well, how it's the same but different. Should I look and see what I did? That one good now. Any others there that you want me to look at from the last? We'll 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 get to number nine. Hang on, just put a start set. Ten. Bingo. Hey. Number 10, you say, Chris? Same package? Okay, let's look at number eight. Uh, three kilogram wood box slides from rest down a 35 uh, degree incline. How long does it take the box to reach the bottom of the 4.75 wood confined mean equals 0.3? I hope I know what I'm doing here. Three kilograms. 35 degrees, 4.7, the distance is 4.75, and the mu value is 0.3. Did I miss anything? And we want to know, we're trying to find time, right? Okay. Wait for us. FD, FN. All right, to get to T, we're going to have to go through, we're going to have to find the acceleration, right? Does everyone see that? To get to T, we're going to find acceleration. Yeah? Okay, so we got to deal with, to get to acceleration, we're going to, basically, we're going to have to figure out what's the net force down the plane, right? We're going to have to have a bunch of junk. F net equals MA, and then from A, we're going to solve for T, right? The only question is, how do we find the bunch of junk? Well, let's start with an easy one. Let's find the weight force. That's always helpful. Gets us started. 3 times 9.8. I'm making this up on the go. I'm not even looking at solutions. 29.4. Anytime you've got an incline like this, you should ask yourself, you probably need to know the force down the plane. So let's do that next. Mg sine theta. 3, 9.8, sine 35. Fd is the force down the plane. Remember, it's the component of the wave force that acts down the plane. Did that answer your question? 16.9. Okay, so 16.9 newtons is pulling this thing down the plane. If there was no friction, the net force would be 16.9. But there is friction, right? Mm -hmm. So we use the FD as sort of force applied if nothing's pushing it down. Correct. It's the force applied by gravity, right? Yeah. Good. Okay, so if there was no friction, that would be the net force, but there is friction. Friction, the only formula that really has friction in it is the mu equals FF over FN1. Do we have an FN value yet? No, we don't. I wonder if I can squeeze this over. mg cos theta. 3, 9.8, cos 35. Oh, 
24.1. Now, the 24.1 newtons is the, is the force between the box to create whatever it is and the incline, the, the normal force, and it encourages or it contributes to uh, friction based on that mu value. So now I'm going to take this value here and I'm going to plug it in there and I'm going to solve for FF. So 0 0.3 is equal to FF over 24.1 giving us a friction force of 7.23. What can I do with that now? What does that 7.23 newtons do? I'll give you a hint. It reduces something. This thing right here. Yeah, you're going to go the net force. Like if you want to go back to your diagram, you've got FD here, which is this component right here, and you've got some friction here contributing towards this net force. So that's going to be FD plus FF or 16.9 minus friction 7.23. Minus 7.23, 9.67. So my my FD, my net force, my 16.9 newtons has been reduced by friction to 9.67, and that's what contributes to the acceleration. Uh, F net is equal to MA. Does that make sense? I'll accept the awkward silence as a yes. Okay, now what? That's the bridging formula. That gets me from dynamics to kinematics. And now I remember the ultimate question was, what is the time? So what formula do we have that has D, A, and T in it? Exactly. Do I have an initial velocity? Well, one can only assume it's zero. It doesn't say that it's already moving, right? How long is this thing? 1.75 meters. Initial velocity is zero. Acceleration 3.22 t squared. Seven seconds. Did I get it right? I got it right. Good for me. I haven't done that course in a long time. Maybe not ever, actually. You mean like solving this thing here? Well, I guess I really did. I, I, I probably skipped a few steps here. That's your. <laughs> Do you want me to sort of do it out a little longer there? Okay. 4.75 would be equal to 1 half of 3.22, which would be 11, 1.61. Right, so T is going to be the square root of 4.75 divided by 1.61. Right? 
That's what it is. It's the same as that. F net is the sum of all the forces, right? Let's go back to the diagram. Well, this, this Fn, I mean, technically, that is Fn. This is technically F perpendicular. It's the perpendicular to the plane component of gravity. And this red one there is the same as that one. So those ones balance off. So they, I won't say they don't exist, but they don't contribute to any movement. Because they balance, right? So the remaining forces are FD and FF, and the FD is greater than this one, and so the net force is 16.9 minus 7.23. And if there was like an additional force, like there was Yeah, if someone's pushing it down, then you'd have to add that, right? If there's maybe like in that, I think the number 10 or something, rather, there's like a rope with a pulley, right? That's yeah. So, yeah, you have to include that. Let's look at number nine. That's the one you want, right? And then I heard number ten after that. Is this useful? Yes. yes? Okay. Thank you for just saying that. A 65 kilogram grade is accelerated accelerate at 7 meters per second squared up an incline, make a 25 degree angle with the horizontal. The coefficient is 0 0.2. How much force is required? Okay, this seems like even harder than the last one. Would you agree? I would say longer. <coughs> ah. Mass is 65. Required acceleration is 7. Mu equals 25. And, sorry, the theta is 25 and the mu value is 0.2. And the question is, how much force is required? What is the applied force? Okay, so here's one like Brandy was talking about where there's an extra force, right? So, once again, there's, maybe I should start labeling this as F perpendicular. Those guys do what? Cancel. Are they still important? Like, do they still matter numerically to our solution here? Oh yeah, they do, right? They're 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 the ones that actually tell how much the friction force is, right? But once we get past that, they're not they're not <clears throat> the the force is not in the direction of the motion here at all. <coughs> so let's have a look at at this guy here. We've got F D down the plane. Which way is this object moving? Up. So I'm going to need some applied force that is up. And is there friction as volume as well? There's a frictional coefficient, so certainly there's friction, but which direction is it? How many people think, agree with Brandy, that they think that the friction force is in the same direction as FD, in other words, down the pipe? Quite a few supporters, and you're right. Why is it down the plane? Yeah, because which way is the motion? Ah, right? Friction is always opposing motion. Friction is like a three-year-old. Right? It opposes whatever mom wants to do. Or dad. I want to be sexist. All right, so where to begin? We have to eventually come up with, we're, we're really asking what's this FA here, right? Right? I need to know FF, I need to know FD. Let's start with those. Always a good bet to start with those. MG sine, sine theta. So 65, 9.8 times the sine of 25. Thank you. I, get, I need my country anyway, so I'll just multiply it up. 69.2 is that what said? Okay. And I also need normal force, which is equivalent to the F perpendicular, which is mg cos theta. 
65, 9.8, cosine 25. Five seventy-seven point three. I need friction. Mu equals FF over FN. Point two is equal to friction force over five seventy-seven point three. 115.5. Do I now have enough to come up with my net force? Actually, am I solving for net force here? There's a bit of a twist here at the end. Because they're giving you the mass and they're giving you the acceleration. What are those two actually telling you? F net. They actually tell you F net. Most of the time you have to find it. It's 65 times 7. Well, now what do I do with that? Anderson, what do I do with it? Yeah, exactly. F net is FA and FD and FF all together. Well, I've got F net. I've got FD. I've got FF. Ah, uh, you would do none of that. You would write the formula first and do what it tells you to do. Uh, well, let's find out. F net is FA plus FD plus FF. And, and I really want to emphasize this. Don't just jump in, oh, i got to add them. Write the formula, and it will all be very evident right away, right? What is F net? 455. What is the applied force? The unknown. We don't know what it is. What is my FD? 269.2, but it's down. Would that be negative? That would be negative. I know. No, you asked me if we should add. Okay. All right. So the FA is unknown. The FD is negative 269.2. Put it in as negative. FF is negative 115.5. But when you solve for FA, excuse me, get a little excited there. These guys go over to the other side, and what happens? They become positive. Right? So, in other words, the applied force is 455 plus 269.2 plus 115.5. It's greater. Is that what you expected? It, if you stop and you think about it, I think most people get that that's true. But their first inclination is always to subtract. So, I caution you to do this. Plug it in and, and sort of go with the signs. Did I get it right? Corey, did I get it right? Did I answer there? You didn't even look. How much do you think something like that would be worth on a test? Well, let's just see. I don't know. Surely, one mark for that final part, right? One mark, an easy one for finding F net. Sure, one there, one there. What is that, five? And then what? Oh, did I? No, I found this one here, right? And then this is the FA, right? So, yeah, probably five. Maybe six if I was generous somehow. I said include a diagram. Yeah, it's not it's not easy, but if you've done a few of them, I mean you want Fine, let's have a look at number ten. Oh this one looks like it's going to challenge me. Hard. I want you to know that I'm flying by the seat of my pants or I have not looked at a solution yet. Quite proud of myself. Who did that? 
that last year. Someone did that for teacher. They give us worksheets. They wouldn't even have to just have a plain worksheet. They would look at it and do it. I don't know. Was it me? Wasn't you? I don't know. I thought you were one of the science teachers or what? You're just saying that. Or is that the rumor going around town? Rumor. <laughs> Well, now that Mr. Kristoff has left town, right? No answer. A 60 kilogram crate is attached to a weight by a cord that passes over a frictionless pulley. What does that mean, frictionless pulley? It means don't worry about the little bit of friction between the pulley and its axle. That's shown. If the coefficient of friction is 0.5, what weight will keep the crate moving up the 40 degree incline at constant speed? Oh yes, the classic constant speed, which is a code of code way of saying acceleration is zero. Therefore, F net is zero. Exactly. Okay, so what we're really asking for is actually it should say what mass, really, right? They're asking for the mass of that little guy there. That's what they're asking for, right? Okay, so this guy's weight force is going to be mg, and that's equivalent to what we would normally call the applied force, right? This guy's weight force is technically the applied force on this guy, right? Okay, so let's let's just talk about it sort of left of the pulley, left of the pulley we're going to call it applied force, right of the pulley we're going to call it weight force. And we're not going to call it that until we get to the end. Okay? We don't want to confuse this weight force with the weight force of this guy. Okay? Okay. So, we want to know what applied force is going to keep it moving at a constant velocity. If it's moving at a constant velocity, it has to be balanced by, there's gravity down, FD, and there's also friction. Well, as always, let's start by finding FD. Mg sine theta, 60, 9.8 times the sine of 40. It's basically 378. Again, find the normal force, or F perpendicular force, mg cos theta. Have you noticed a trend that we always start by finding those two? Even if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get some marks by finding those two, right? Do them. Okay. Now, I mean, and usually the next step now is to find the, the friction, FF over FN, or this one, right? So we have a mu, or do we not? Oh, it's 0.5. Oh, yeah, there it's up there. 0. 0.5. Friction over Fn, 450. Oh, what are you doing? You can do this in your head. Friction force is 225. Now, I'll pause for a second. I think maybe we should show it like this. I think we should write F net is equal to the applied force plus the FD plus the FF. But the F net is zero because of that constant velocity thing, right? Let's, let's show it this way. I think this is better. We're solving for applied force. FD is minus 378 minus 225 giving me an overall applied force of those two numbers added together. 603. 
I need 603 newtons in which direction? Up the ramp. Up the ramp. Man, that's good. I can't believe how much better it's gotten to recognize my handwriting. 603 newtons up the ramp. Therefore, the weight force of the little guy has to be 603, right? And that's equal to mass times gravity. We're solving for mass. Gravity is a full 9.8. 61.5. Ooh, that's big. Is that the answer? It just left it at oh, it left it at 603 newtons? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, the question did say what weight, didn't it? All right. So, like, what's the difference between this one and the previous ones? It's just really finding one small different thing, but the overall concept is pretty much the same, right? 8, 9, 10? They're all pretty much the same. There's a part B. Pardon me? Oh, there's a part B? Yeah. Sure, sorry. Part B says, if the cord is cut when the crate is at the top of the incline, how far would the crate have slid by the time its speed reaches 7.5 meters? Do we know the length of this thing? Do we need to know the length? No, I don't think we do. How far? We're solving for D. The initial velocity is zero. FD is still the same. 378. Friction is the same with one small exception. That being what? What's the difference? It's out of the direction, isn't it? Right? Here the FD is this way, but now because it's sliding down, the friction is that way. And so the net force down is 378 minus 225. One fifty three. And now, F net is mass times acceleration. Is it surprising that the acceleration is less than 9.8? Or should it be less than 9.8? It has to be, right? It's down a ramp. It, the maximum something falling is going to be 9.8. Right? So it's sliding down a ramp, it's going to have to be less than 9.8. So 2.55. And the question is, how far would it have to have slid by the time its speed reaches 7.5? So I know that the final velocity is 7.5, and I'm solving for D, and I've got acceleration. Bf squared, uh-oh. Equals Bi squared plus to a D. I think I open up another window. Seven point five squared is zero squared plus two times the acceleration of two point five five. Solve for D. Is that the answer? That's a long round. Is that enough? Yeah, I think so. <laughs>